today's guest in the virtual studio currently hosts his own podcast, co-hosts two TV shows, and says his work resume is weirder than most grown-ups resumes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one, the only, Kyle Brandt, co-host of NFL Network's Good Morning Football. Yeah! <laughs> well, With air horns. Yes. Wow. Um, thank you guys for having me, Kaysen. Brilliant intro. Uh, well, great production level. And a lot of people don't have sound effects, let alone Christmas trees and Oilers hats and angry run shirts and co-hosts. <laughs> this is a first class show already. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, well, thank man. you for coming on the show. Kyle. We're so excited you're here. And uh, hi, Evelyn. We, we know you brought a friend. Yes, a this, is, this is almost five and a half year old Evelyn who can't, who just when you say that she's shy and doesn't want to be on the camera will come crawling on camera. Nice. And she's very excited right now because of course it's Santa Claus time and he's coming to town. So there's a lot of energy in the Brent household right now. And I hope to yeah. bring that to you guys. <laughs> we are so happy to have her and you on the show today. Thank you. All right. So we'll just jump right in. So when okay. you were a kid, what did you want to be when you were growing up? An NFL running back. I, I listen. I grew up in Chicago. I, I was a, I was grew up a Bears fan, and uh, running back was always my favorite position because when I was really little, Walter Payton was the coolest thing in the world, and Bears fans loves running back just like Titans fans do. So um, when I, through all the ways I started playing soccer football when I was about eighth grade, and you know my dad, as most parents are um, <laughs> like to do, say no, 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 you're going to be quarterback. You're going to be quarterback. That's the position for my son. You're going to be quarterback. That's where the money is. That's where. You... And I'm like, Dad. I don't throw very well. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can run really well. So eventually I wanted to go on and be like a Chris Johnson type or of course, Derek, that type of thing. Um, I'm breaking a lot of tackles during this interview, which is actually kind of meta because Avalon's trying to tackle me as I speak. <laughs> so I wanted to be an NFL running back. And then once I realized that I wasn't going to be, I wanted to be able to talk about NFL running backs, which is what I do now. Love that, that is, that is a interesting story. As <laughs> Well, I love the fact that you shifted into running back in, in spite of the fact that, you know, your dad was talking about being the quarterback and, you know, like, I, I can run. And yeah. so, Every was, time they would call a pass, I would drop back and then just run, you know, like, like Tannehill does sometimes, except yeah, Tannehill yeah, yeah. often throws it and throws yeah. it really, really well. Yeah. I was on, in eighth grade, was the first time in pads, and it was a town called Buffalo Grove, Illinois, and I was on the Buffalo Grove Bills we had like the Bills logo on our helmet, oh but it was different God. colors. And uh, I think after like the 20th consecutive passing play where I just took it and ran, my coach was like, all right, you can play running back. Get over there. It's fine. Because we never <laughs> end up throwing anyway. <laughs> that's so awesome. That's, that's really cool. Oh my Thank God. you. So that kind of segues into our next question was, did you play sports as a kid? And so you said you started in eighth grade. Yeah. Did, did you play anything else before that? I played everything I could get my hands on. You know, I um, my uh, my parents, both of them, were uh, were reluctant to have me in full pads hitting until I was in eighth oh, yeah. grade, which I actually yeah. really uh, enjoyed. I'm glad they made that decision. Mm -hmm. So that let me play, you know, outdoor soccer, indoor soccer, a lot of basketball, a lot of baseball, all like the classics, really. You know, I didn't play any of these really cool, like kind of artsy niche sports. Like I didn't play lacrosse, or I didn't, I never played hockey, and I wish I would have in retrospect, but. Listen, I grew up in the time of the, the Bears and the Michael Jordan Bulls in Chicago. So I won the sports fan lottery. I grew up watching Michael Jordan play basketball games, in, oh, you know, okay. 20 minutes from my house. Wow. So it was really, really lucky. I played every sport and every sport video game that I could get my hands on. <laughs> we've, we've read about that. And oh, yeah. That's going to be one of my I am addicted. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I am addicted to sports video games. They honestly are so entertaining. What are you playing? Uh, Retro Bowl a lot. Have you heard of it? What's, what's no, no, no. What's that? So about? it's it, I, have, I have it on my phone. It's like uh, it's pretty much just like old arcade style football, but like with like modern uh techniques and stuff. It's it's really fun, honestly. Retro like, ball. Yeah, retro ball. Okay, I think Santa Claus is bringing that. That's great. Retro ball. I'm gonna write it down. That sounds perfect. I love that. It's right up my alley. You need to. <laughs> it's really fun. Okay. So how old were you when you decided you wanted to work full time in the world of sports? And did you have did you have to have any tra special training for your job? These are really good questions, you guys. You're all over it. You've thought about it. You've researched it. I can tell I'm super flattered. No, I had a really unusual path. You know, some people would know when they're a kid or maybe when they're in high school or college that I want to be a sports writer or commentator and everything. I pushed the actual playing it as far as I could, which is all the way through playing college football. And then, you know, I started thinking like, man, these 
these professional running backs, I, I, I'm watching them on CBS, and they appear to be much faster and much bigger than I am, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So then I took a weird left turn into Hollywood, and I was an actor, and I was on TV, and I was on reality shows, and I had this very bizarre uh, 10 years in my 20s, at which point I finally decided, you know, I think it's time to go back to my first love, and uh, I got back into sports, and just through like a, a series of good fortune, um, I was able to do it. And as far as training, I would just say, people ask me that sometimes, like, I want to be in sports media. What should I work on? Just write, 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 write. What should I major in? Anything in college where you have to write, because I think there are two people in sports media, two kinds of people, those who can write and those who need to have things written for them. If you can write yourself, uh, it, it makes you a lot more appealing to people who might hire you. And um, thank God I, I would have been able to do that. So was English, I, because I, you we're doing some research, we noticed that yeah. English, you graduated with a degree in English from Princeton yeah. University, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. And so did you love to read when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of drove you to, to pick that path? Uh, I did love to read growing up. And we had a thing at my house, again, where it's like my mom would say, all right, enough with the Nintendo, put it down, like you have to pick up a book now. And I just remember all kinds of adventure books as a kid. Does that sound familiar? Is that the same thing that's going on there? Did I just hit close to home? <laughs> I've done three hours of Nintendo. Now you have to read. So listen, all adventure books. Um, I started reading uh, what I started to really like when I was kind of coming to my adolescence. Like when I was in seventh or eighth grade, I started reading a lot of biographies about different athletes. Like I'd read the book about Bo Jackson or the book about Michael Jordan or my favorite athletes, whatever book that they would do, I couldn't get enough of those. And then that carried into college. And, you know, at Princeton's um, majors they offer, I, I think they go back 250 years. There's no like real super advanced ones when I was there. So it was like history, politics, English, and maybe a couple others that was never going to be me. So I just thought I love reading and I, I think I'm a pretty good writer. So anything lets me do that. And I have to tell you, Sometimes people will say whatever major you choose in college because it ends up being kind of irrelevant. Oh, you'll find your way. In my opinion, I really do think it helped me a lot just because I had to write. If you have to sit down and write 20 pages on Shakespeare or the Canterbury Tales, like, believe me, you can write a couple pages about the Cowboys or the you know, Seahawks. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll find your way. <laughs> and it'd be much more pleasurable, I think. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. If you've done that, you can do anything. Even on the Jaguars, I can write. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> we have no worries. <laughs> I know. Neither do they. Sure, we they just gave them a shout out. And we, Thank you. <laughs> I know. Just dealt with them and moved on. Yeah. yeah. Jason loves reading, quite honestly. And he and his brother Trevin have been reading since they were very little. Like we used to take them to the library all the time as little kids. And now they still love going. But what are some of the books you're reading? Because you're doing a lot of what Kyle said that he was doing when he was a kid about your age is reading autobiographies or biographies. Who are some of the people that you've read recently? Um, I read a lot. I don't, ex I don't remember, but uh, they're mostly just about like, I remember I read one about Tony Dungy for uh, when, yeah. he co when he coached the Colts. Uh, I also read one about, uh, I don't remember his name. He played for the Titans. He had, he had cancer. So I read, I read an autobiography about him, but they're just okay. really interesting. I'm like, how they've gotten uh to where the, to where they are now and how many challenges they've had to overcome in life so yeah. i definitely think that um they're definitely up uplifting stories and they're also just really cool stories to read about yeah you get to that part in the middle of the book where there's like five pages of pictures you can look through <laughs> like that's a, it's always the best part uh yes. Tony Dungy's a great one to read like incredible coach legendary won the super bowl uh, tells funny stories about how we, they were playing the Bears and they had this kick returner, Devin Hester, who was the best kick returner of all time. And they said, we're going to kick to him. We're not going to kick away from him. We're too proud. And then the night before the game, he said, nah, I think we'll just kick to him. We're, we're, we're never going to stay away from him. They kicked him. He returned it for a touchdown. He said it was the first biggest mistake he ever made. So funny. But that's part of He's got a million stories like that. That's amazing. Well, we found out recently that there was a big milestone anniversary in your life. Um, in the fall of 1996, you helped lead the Stevenson High School Patriots <laughs> of Lincolnshire, Illinois, to an 18-13 victory in the Illinois State Football Championship quarterfinals. As a halfback, you were the MVP of the game with 24 carries for 108 yards and one touchdown. And the local news interviewed you after the game. And we'd like to play that clip for you right now, if we could. Would that yeah, let her rip, sure. <laughs> okay. okay, so. With our CCI 
ESPN most valuable player, that being halfback Kyle Brandt. Take it away, Dave. Nicely, that's right. I'm here with Kyle Brandt, the CCN MVP. Kyle, we have you 24 carries, 103 yards, the one touchdown. You guys seem to stick through it, stick with the running game throughout the contest, and it seemed to pay off, especially with that big drive in the third quarter where you picked up some good gains. Yeah, uh, that plays into a lot of our game plan. When we can control the ball and keep it up, it gives offense off the field. Good things usually happen, provided that we get first downs. On the other side of the ball, defensively, you playing both sides. Did you have anything in particular against Brem, especially to stop Dorsey? It seemed like you guys were stacking it up front and trying to make Brown beat you through the air. Yeah, uh, actually, we we'd only put in the, uh, it's called a four-linebacker set that we, when I come into play, we'd only put that in a few times during the week. We didn't expect uh, to use it as much as we did, but we had some success with it early, so uh, Coach Bob Smith just went with it the whole way. And Dorsey broke the one, I think I was in the first place in scrimmage. I wasn't in on that play, and we were in the other defense. So we switched over to what we call the beef front, but with the extra line back and it was really successful it seemed to work the remainder of the game they had that one big play in the second half and that was it for the friend offense well that'll do it here on the field once again with kyle brandt the ccn mvp back up to you lee that's wild okay that was awesome <laughs> that was awesome How do you so feel many just so many that? takeaways <laughs> first of all i'm like i i, I i'm totally auditioning for espn or something i'm completely <laughs> peacocking and trying to be like so erudite and insightful <laughs> and yet at, at the time when you're very 17, impressive thank yeah. you. well thank you you're that young and if someone is coming to you I don't, that was like some local access it might as well have been monday night football a guy with right. a microphone is going to ask yeah. you questions like you're a stan marino totally. or something um yeah. i do have to say pointing out that the only touchdown the other team scored i wasn't in for that play is a little bit cocky and not necessarily as team oriented as I would like to be. But again, <laughs> 17 and I didn't I wasn't terribly experienced in the media though. <laughs> but it was it was so good. So Thank I you. have to ask you, was that your first on camera interview? And was that the day the angry runs was born? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I love that you have the shirt. That is so cool. Thank All you. Right. That's definitely the first on camera interview. I, I don't even think when I was a kid, I, I don't even think I did some local news thing where they ask a kid why they're at the carnival. I think that was probably the first time I ever had a microphone in my face. That's and very impressive as, for first time, dude. Oh, thank you. Well, Trusted. again, like I, I couldn't do zero math, but I could speak <laughs> and write. Again, the English major thing. That's yes. and the, the science and the math, rough. Uh, but as far as the angry runs thing, it, I, I guess in a way it could have been the, the whole birth of angry runs Actually, the the way we crown people like Derrick Henry and give it oh, oh, one or two. You mean what do you got? You mean this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean our king, right? Yes. Here. <laughs> El Rey and Ohado, the angry king. That's so cool. And he has a giant sword. Oh, yeah. He's got the cross eye black. God, that is a cool toy. That is awesome. I want that thing. That is a bobblehead angry king. Um well, that, it is if really we can started. find one for you. I hope Send so. It your way. My high school coach was all about run straight ahead, run straight ahead, none of this dancing, any of that stuff. So that's how I did it. And then that's how the, I came to admire players in the league who do it like that. There's some great players, great running backs who, you know, are more, they're like, they're slippery. They've got cool moves. Guys like, uh, you know, Alvin Kamara, Christian mm -hmm. McCaffrey, Shady McCoy. I love those guys, but I like the straight ahead runners and who will still lower their shoulder. And I think it really was going back to my high school experience. That was an incredible deep dive you guys did. Well, I, when I came across it, I said, oh, th this is going to be fun. And thank you for letting us share Sure, that, that was you. amazing. And uh, I have to ask, when was the last time you saw that video? Um, you know, I think it might have been five or six years ago. I'm trying to, th I feel like, because um, I don't remember, I remember the visual of the guy with the ponytail interviewing me, but I don't remember what I said. <laughs> it said I think Channel maybe 8 when Morning Football Lab. started. Is that right? I think that's just this local suburban Chicago mm -hmm. network access. I think when Good Morning Football started, they might have played that clip, but okay. it was only the visual. So like the, all the talk about, you know, provided that we get first downs, like I don't, I, it's been a long time since I've heard that. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> so of all the different jobs that you've had, which one yeah. has been your favorite so far? Um, I, I have to say, you know, the, the football thing is great. Being 23 years old, living in LA and getting to be on Days of Our Lives was awesome. I mean, it was the coolest thing. It was just every day you'd go to work and the stage that I would go was right next to the Ellen Show and the Tonight Show in, in LA, in Burbank. Wow. And 
he'd give you these ridiculous lines to read and they'd say, you know, show your muscles and tell the girl you love her. And I was like, I can do that. And then they would <laughs> give you a check and you'd go home and you were like a baby. You know, I, that was 20 years ago for me now. So, wow. I, I mean, the, the Good Morning Football in the NFL is, is brilliant. But being that young right out of college and being on TV showing your muscles like was so hilarious and so fun. I think it's that. Well, so on that note, so yeah. uh, you are kind of... Um, in a full circle with Joey Tribbiani from Friends because <laughs> yeah. of you went on to be Philip Kyriakis, which yeah. by the way, I, uh, you know, loved Days of Our Lives. And um, so Philip Kyriakis, so Victor yeah. Kyriakis. Go on. In life, his daughter is Jennifer Aniston, yep. who was Rachel on Friends. And now you are basically in the circle of Friends. You are all over it. This <laughs> this is the most well researched show I think I've ever been on in my life. What? No really? one brings that up. You no. guys do your homework. Aww. And you know what? You said, oh, what would be your advice or special skills? And I said, right. Also, like, do your homework. Look up people. Ask them people they've never asked them things they've never been asked before. I've never been asked about John Aniston being Jennifer's father in what? since he was my father on the show. It's almost like Jennifer and I were sisters. Like and I, sister, I, brother, yeah. Yeah. And siblings and and then at the time she was married to Brad Pitt, so I felt like he was my brother-in-law. And so like believe That's me, I've thought about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy we could bring that memory back. Oh, it's for so you. cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we think you're fantastic on Good Morning Football, and your football knowledge is like none other, but we want to ask you about your love for 80s video games. Okay. And you say you're a tech mobile player, but yeah. now you're co-hosting a game show on Peacock. Yeah. That's that's based on another popular 80s video game that my mom says she used to play in the arcade. Sure, same. Can you share more about it with us? Sure. So, Cal, here's the deal. As strange as this may sound to someone of your generation, there used to be a thing called quarters. And they're, this, <laughs> they're circular. And if you have four of them, you get something called a dollar. And oh. you take said quarters and you put them in this giant machine the size of a taxi cab. And you get to play a game with the joystick and buttons. It was it would have blown your mind. Oh. I, I promise that's what we did. it. So one of those games was called Frogger. And the concept of the game was you're a frog and there's traffic and you got to jump across the, fro the traffic and not get hit by a car. <laughs> And people loved it. They lost their minds. And oh my so gosh, yeah. They, you know, I mean, you played totally. Frogger, right? Oh, yeah. And Addicted. you played Frogger, Centipede, Donkey Kong, Galaga. Galaga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of them. So someone, some Space genius, Invaders. Space Invaders. Mm -hmm. And that's coming. They made a TV show out of Frogger in which real life people are the frogs and they have to cross these giant, like, uh, comical cartoonish cars and do all this. It's crazy. It's like, uh, floor is lava with wipeout and like just a little bit of squid game, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and that's the show we do. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we've, we've seen it and it is absolutely awesome and hilarious and uh, intense and um, extremely entertaining. It seems fun, but it also just seems really, uh, I'm trying to think of a word, exhausting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. It's exhausting to even talk about. I can't even imagine the kids doing it. Yeah. But I have to say, you know, um, Evelyn, who was sent upstairs, who is five and a half, and Calvin, who's eight, they don't, they, they couldn't be less impressed that Good Morning Football, NFL, not into that. But when we do Frogger and we sit oh, down man. and I, they, they're, they're just stunned into silence, they watch the entire thing. And I said to my, my incredible wife, I go, wow, look at them, honey. They're riveted. And she goes, no, <laughs> they're riveted. And I was like, wow, that's really good. That's what she said. She nailed it. <laughs> she sure did. Oh my gosh. She sounds like your ultimate hype woman. Oh, she's incredible. Yeah. The, yeah. the great Brooke Brandt, uh, probably upstairs, listening to me and be like, are you talking about me? <laughs> yes, we are. So she's, she's incredible. We've been Shout together out to since Team Brandt. 2008. Absolutely. That's fabulous. So are there any other projects you're currently working on that you would like to share with our listener and where can they find you on all the, sh on, on all the shows or the socials? All the shows and the socials. Um, the project that I'm currently working on is the Santa Claus project for this home. We're hoping that Santa Claus comes. We are already talking about what kind of cookies we're going to put out. Uh, should we do milk or eggnog? Should we just do both? I'm always in favor of just leaving them everything. I, I agree. And don't forget the reindeer. we got to have some carrots. Some vegetables yeah. of some sort. Last year, we found actual reindeer tracks in our front yard. And we were wondering wow. why they were in the front yard, because normally they are up on the rooftop. Yeah. So we're, the, the reindeer's 
played a trick last year and went mm -hmm. off the rooftop to the range to the to the grass. So we're, this is my point. We're into this now. We talk constantly about can we have a fire in the fireplace on Christmas Eve, or do we have to turn it off before the night? So uh, we have to turn it off unquestionably. We want the big right. man to be safe. Yeah. So we talk about that stuff all the time. Um, <laughs> that is my biggest project right now. Is Santa Love Claus it. coming to town, starring yeah. the Brandt Family Network right now? <laughs> Love it. Sounds like an interesting show. It does. I hope so. I, I, it's, I hope it's a comedy, not a tragedy. But the kids have been behaving pretty well. Uh, and listen, that you asked so. Um, uh frog around peacock if you have kids you'll love it uh just watch them it's so fun so it's pg rated um well, 10 questions people don't have kids honestly it's oh yeah extremely entertaining yeah oh, thank you. honestly and then you know good morning football i don't want to plug everything i want to plug you guys where can i find your socials where are you guys on social what do you got so i um, am Kason is um not yet not yet but okay, our show the show is on instagram at titans talk with Kason. All right, I'm writing it right now. Tyson's okay. talk with Kason. Titan's talk with Kason. Yep. And Got it. then I am on um, Twitter at I am Zap Girl. Okay. And I am I am Zap Girl. Z A P G I R L. Why are you Zap Girl? It sounds fun. It's like a superhero. Oh well, thank you for asking. No one has really asked about that recently. Um, so I am a sudden cardiac arrest survivor. I have an implanted defibrillator, and I've had it for 24 years. And so when I originally got my device, uh, there was hardly any word about how these devices were going to help people save life or help save people's lives. I was terrified, but my sister in her um, just trying to bring some levity to the situation and trying to get my mind off the fact that I've just survived sudden death. Uh, she nicknamed me Zap Girl because I'm bionic and my device is in my chest right here. And it has saved my life four times. Oh, my God, that's incredible. Yeah. So I'm That's not sure if you know what so. an AED is, but yeah. they, oh, you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've heard about that. I have yeah. someone with someone. So basically, if you're traveling along in an uh, airport or maybe at your studio, they have a, a defibrillator or ask if they have an AED. Um, those sudden cardiac arrest can happen to anyone at any time. Mm -hmm. And the quicker the response is with a, a device, an AED, mm -hmm. you don't have to know how to do or to use it, you just turn it on and it tells you what to do. But I never have to wait for that to come and help save my life. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. someone like Case and so we and my husband and, and our son, um, I have one in the back of my car at all times. And so it's at the house, it's travels wherever mm -hmm. we go, but they're not required by law. And so that's one thing I'm working on. I started social media campaign on Instagram look at you. called Zap Girl and the AEDs, asking people if they see an AED to say to take a selfie with it and to say, hey, thank you to whatever business or establishment that has these devices, because it's helping people have a fighting chance at life. And because that's response incredible. time is between 11 and 15 minutes uh, for EMS to get to wherever you're at. So wow. that's okay. why I am at I am Zap Girl on um, Twitter and then Zap Girl and the AEDs on Instagram. Got it. That's yeah. really, really cool. Well, thank you for asking. Sure. Wow. So, so uh, before we go, we have three questions I ask each guest. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. So, what uh, advice would you give your 13 year old self? Be careful. <laughs> be, be very careful. I was I, I was a rambunctious dude. Uh, got injured a lot. Made mm -hmm. some crazy choices in my 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 love life. I would just say be fun, but have careful. Be excuse me. I even messed it up. I said be fun, but have careful. No, no, no. That's terrible advice. <laughs> be have fun, but be careful. See, this is my body trying not to have myself give myself this advice. It's trying to resist it. The thirteen year old doesn't want to hear it. it have yeah. fun, but be careful. We get it. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank so you. was there a mentor or teacher that really inspired you when you were growing up? Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Um, you know, the, the coaches for sure, but I, I, I um, my parents for sure. I had a math teacher when I was in a sophomore in high school named Mrs. Fisher. And she's like, look, here's the deal. I know you, you don't like math. I know you hate it. I know you don't want to do it, but you have to do it. And if you want to go to college, let's just get through this and I'll help you. And I just thought it was the coolest attitude for her to just say cards on the table. This is what I do for a living. And I know you hate it, but like, I will help you if you will let me. And Mrs. Fisher ended up getting me an A in that class. And she ended up writing my college recommendation. And that was just teachers. You know, I have a younger sister who's a kindergarten teacher and I respect it so much. Um, so 
the fact that she could just say that to me and be so cool about it, uh, I will never forget. It was really fun. Shout out to Mrs. Fisher. Yeah, shout out Absolutely. to Mrs. Fisher. She's Dolores right Fisher, wherever she may be, yeah. Dolores Fisher, you were awesome. Yes, that's so cool. So I have one final question. It has stopped okay. so many people, but oh, great. are you ready? Yeah, no, but yeah. <laughs> Pizza or steak? Okay. God, that's a great question. What a beautiful question. <laughs> See, now the real, the real wise guy will say, well, well, I'll just get steak on my pizza. I'm not going to cop out like that. No. Um, listen to me. Let me listen this very clearly. Born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, currently living in New York. Oh, I will not gosh. only will I go pizza, I'll go pizza a thousand times out of a thousand. With due <laughs> respect to a perfect medium rare steak with a few sides, I will always go pizza, be a deep dish or thin. It's cheaper. It's more delicious. And I don't care if it was more expensive. I am going to pizza all day long that I get it right. Now I'm hungry for pizza. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> okay, That's we have to best. ask toppings. Oh, okay. You know what? Like, yes. That's my answer to toppings. Okay, there yes. you go. And yeah, I don't, I cannot get quite to that point where I'm doing the Hawaiian and the pineapple uh, and the ham thing. And I know that the friends. Hawaiian pizza goes hard. <laughs> now, Gown, are you applauding because you, you agree with me or you like the Hawaiian? Uh, I agree with you. I don't like okay. Hawaiian. And you know, here's the thing. I'm saying that, but like, if I walked into a room and all there was was Hawaiian, I'd, just, I, I'd eat the Hawaiian. I don't care. I, I'll well, eat then any you can kind always of take pizza. the pineapple off. Yeah, yeah. And look, there there could be dog food on the pizza. I don't, <laughs> eat it. I don't care what the topping is. Kibbles and bits, it's going down. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, so much That's fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for your time on the show today. It was honestly an amazing time talking to you. Uh, it's my pleasure. This is really cool. I, I get the, the privilege to do a lot of shows and there's a lot of shows where the hosts sort of mail it in. They show up and just say, let you do all the heavy lifting. You guys put thought into the questions. You did deep dive oh, research oh. that I've never been asked before. You had a production element that most people don't bother to do. And you have a natural chemistry as hosts. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to be on the show with you, Callan wow. and Zap Girl. Thank you very much. Oh, man. oh thank you so thank much. You.